Welcome back to Radio Row. We're at the Final Four. Justin Gard, A.J. Monsoor, now joined in Dallas by uh, the coach of Creighton, Greg McDermott. Coach, thanks for coming by today. Happy to join you guys. I know it's only because your son is around doing Naismith Award <laughs> interviews that you said, well, I better, go, I better go talk to those idiots too, <laughs> right? You wouldn't be here if Doug wasn't running that, around. That's definitely why I'm dressed up today. I, I haven't brought a suit to the Final Four in the in my 25 year coaching career but this year i've got several it's been uh it's been it's going to be a fun week for us today was obviously really special with the uh oscar robinson announcement this morning the wooden award uh at noon so uh it, it's it's been a fun ride we're enjoying it you've probably heard that your speech post game to your team after the loss to baylor a few weeks ago kind of went viral kind of took on a life of its own i have to imagine it's probably one of the more difficult it's probably never easy to address a team after the season is over but i have to imagine this one was probably one of the more difficult ones that you've ever had to no do. question and it's uh you know you never as a coach you don't prepare for the end of the season right uh you don't want to jinx yourself and say to yourself i better prepare what i'm going to tell these guys if if in fact we get beat uh, so really you're just thinking on the way to the locker room and in that particular case, it was just so unexpected uh, the way Baylor was able to dominate us. We really hadn't had that done to us really in the in the entire career of these, these four seniors. So the last thing I wanted them to remember is what happened on the floor that day. There's been so many great things that have transpired during their careers at Creighton. Uh, they've really put us on the map. I think their performance uh, over the course of the last three or four years is the reason we're in the Big East Conference. Uh, so you, you wanted them to see the big picture. Obviously, they were hurting. It was a painful moment in there, but uh, these are a wonderful group of young men, and I think they've gotten past it, and hopefully they appreciate what they've accomplished. Like you mentioned, in that moment, it's tough for these guys to realize the success that they've had, not only for themselves but for the university. You mentioned it in that speech. You know that you, they, This team, this group of guys, has kind of put Creighton on the map. How, how does that look, and how does that transfer going into the future for the school, for your coaching, uh, in the, the future of the program? I, I felt it was so important in our first season in the Big East to make a good first impression. Uh, and, and I think we were able to do that. Obviously, you know, and when we were in the Missouri Valley Conference, we played a few games a year on national television, but not many. And this year, essentially every game was on national TV where our fans across the country could watch us play, uh, where recruits could watch us play, and where fans of opposing teams could, could pop, pop on the t- television and watch a Big East game. So I think the story of our university and our athletic department, our basketball program, uh, in general, was able to be told. Uh, we play in an unbelievable arena. Uh, we averaged almost 18,000 fans a game. It's a basketball place. Uh, and I'm not sure everybody knew that outside the borders of Nebraska. So it, it's been fun to be able to tell that story. And I think the uh, the job that these seniors have been able to, to accomplish with their hard work, I think will help us moving forward. Greg McDermott joining us here at Radio Row down here in Dallas. Um, it, it has kind of become a basketball state all of a sudden, uh, with you obviously being the established one. And after you beat Nebraska by like 100 for the second year in a row, uh, our friend Tim Miles comes in and kind of sets that part of the state uh, on fire. What was that like to kind of watch from afar? And you're thinking, hey, I'm happy that he tweets and everything, and I'm happy that he's a good guy. But come on, we've had a good program here for a little while. Well, Tim and I are longtime friends. Yeah. Uh, we, we started in Division Two together as assistants up in the Dakotas, uh, him in South Dakota, me in North Dakota, and then started our head coaching career in the same league. Uh, he, he at Southwest State in Minnesota and me at, at Wayne State competing against each other at that time. So we've known each other for a long time. So I'm not actually watching him from, from afar. I'm watching it pretty close. He's sure. a good friend. I want to see his program do well. Obviously, the, on the night that we play, I want to make sure we win. Uh, but uh, I was really, really happy for him, and he's done an incredible job in a short period of time. Well, and what, what you mentioned, you've, you've known Tim for a long time. Mm-hmm. And there seems to be a lot of good coaches that kind of come out of the Midwest and, and really even come out of the D2 levels from the Dakotas. What do you, is it because it's so cold? And we know this because we're in Minneapolis. <laughs> is it so cold you just have to sit there and watch tape and figure out how to become a better coach? There, there's a lot of good coaches around the country now that have come out of there. You know, I, I think there's, there's great coaches throughout the country uh, yeah, at the small college level that – just for whatever reason haven't gotten a break or maybe in some cases they're happy where they're at and they have no desire to try to move on to this level because as as many positive things that we get to deal with there's some things that aren't the most fun sometimes uh in the world of social media that we live in now so um but tim and i were just two examples of guys that got a break got an opportunity to to get that first uh, coaching job at the division one level and then move our career forwards and you know one of them is bo ryan in the final four this week was a division three coach and a very successful coach at a different level before he moved to the division one level 
Uh, as a young man who once told my father to shut up from the pitching mound of an in-house baseball game, I understand uh, the, uh, the father-son coaching situation can get contentious. This is your profession. This is your son's future. Is that a tough balance to do, or is it all just business when you get to this level and you, you just have to get out there and do what you do? Well, you and Doug have something in common on how you treat your father <laughs> uh, because there were several times he gave me that look. Uh, during the course of the four years you know because I was a college coach I never had the opportunity to coach little league baseball or AU basketball because I was always traveling at those times so this was a first for Doug and I and it was really important to Doug at the start that I treat him like everybody else and I was okay with that as long as he understood he had to treat me as his coach when we were between the four lines and can't roll his eyes at me like you'd roll your (laughs) eyes at your dad when he's told you to do the same thing over and over and it was probably more of an adjustment for Doug because my voice for 18 years was his father's voice and all of a sudden overnight it's now his coach's voice so there was a period of adjustment but once he understood where I was coming from and what I needed to do uh, and what my role was in it it was really an easy transition and I think most people that watched us practice would have a hard time telling where we were father and son based on our interactions in practice and frankly uh, that's the way Doug and I both wanted it. After that Baylor game, you, you made a point to um, walk up to all your players as they came off the court, those four seniors, uh, and, and Doug came in on the end. You know, you know, you've had a relationship, obviously, with Doug his whole life, but with these players for four years. And, and you've gone through a lot. You've, you've climbed the mountain to a certain point. What, what, what's that moment like where you know that for these guys, some of them it's their last time playing, some of them, for sure it's the last time you're coaching them. You have that final moment to say thank you, whatever it may be. Well, you have, there's, there's two sets of emotions. There's a selfish set of emotions that I have that I know I'm never going to get to coach them again. <clears throat> and then there's a feeling of how they feel knowing that this is the end of a, of a journey for them in which they've invested a lot of time, a lot of energy, made a lot of sacrifices. And in their, in their case, they've done an unbelievable job of representing our program on and off the basketball floor. So that was a chance for, for me uh, to thank them for what they, they have done and, and let them know how much I appreciate not just the players that they were but the, the people that they are. I have a list of questions that I'm trying to get. Yeah, I'm a basketball root. Um, if I, I was a below average sophomore basketball coach about three years ago, so my resume doesn't exactly resonate around here. So I'm trying to learn a little bit, Coach. Um, I want to know the best book to read, the best book about coaching or the best book about that you've read that you've really applied into, into your life. You know, I've read a lot of John Wooden's books, and uh, you know, I, I just think his theories on leadership, um, I think that separates – him from anybody that else that I've ever studied uh, you know his the way he taught his players and so many things beyond basketball I think was one of the reasons that they were as successful as they were on the floor so I couldn't even name my favorite one of those but I've read about any everyone yeah any of them will do who's the best coach nobody here knows about right now who's a coach that you say you know that guy I'm sure there's a couple that don't get their due that don't get their credit maybe even like you said in the Dakotas or the Northern Sun who's the best coach we don't know about right now oh there's so many of them it's really hard for me to to uh, you know point my finger at uh, boy, that's a that's a tough one, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to decline to answer that because <laughs> I've got too many friends, and it, there might be a few guys I've got to play down the sure. road. All right, so you've got five seconds left in a game where you're up three. You're on defense. Are you fouling or are you defending? The new the new rage. Foul <laughs> I, or defend? I defend. I've never fouled uh, any any time in my career, and. I think there's a lot of things that go into that. I think one of them is how good are your rebounders. Uh, yeah. You know, if I've got Kevin Durant and Michael Beasley on the low block, so a missed free throw is going to end up in their hands. That's one thing. But, you know, we practice all the time defending. We practice those situations, and I'm just a believer in trusting my defense in that situation. You've got one play on offense with five seconds to go. What are you running? I get the ball to Doug and get out of the way. Well, that, it's, not, it's, it's 2014. And we're talking 2014 and 2015. Doug's gone. You know, now I'm in the future. Where are we going? I, I, think, the, I think with the new rules and, and the – the emphasis on protecting the ball handler, I think some sort of isolation and attacking the basket is the best way to go. Last thing, as someone who uh, grew up, or my mom grew up in Cedar Falls, so there's a lot of northern Iowa in our family. Uh, I grew up going to Eldon Miller basketball camps at the Uni Dome. What was it like playing? I know you played for him for two years, I yep. believe. He came in midstream. What, what was it like playing in Cedar Falls for the Panthers and for Coach Miller? You know, he, he probably had as much impact on my coaching career as anybody uh, that touched me during my playing and, and coaching career because uh, there was a value in teaching the game. Uh, the fundamentals of teaching the game of basketball was 
you were at the camp, so you know what I'm talking about because I worked those camps. And he was going to make sure each youngster that came to those camps learned some fundamentals of the game of basketball. And his approach to college practice was very elementary, at least I thought so at the time when yeah. he was coaching me, that really we're working on this basic footwork. But as I got onto the playing floor and as I've moved on into my coaching career, I understand uh, how, how balance, how footwork uh, is so important in the game of basketball. So uh, it, was a, it was obviously something for me that changed me, and I think it was one of the reasons I became interested in coaching was because of my relationship with Coach Miller. Last thing, part two. I just met you, but we have to. I have to question your parenting. Even though you've raised the Naismith, you know, Player of the Year, um, Saul Phillips is a good friend of ours. Sorry about that. I know. Well, you know, misery <laughs> finds company. He loves company, and he claims that one of his main jobs as a graduate assistant for you was taking care of the guy that's doing interviews right now. I mean. It appears he's overcome that adversity, so he's clearly very strong. Yes, Saul, actually, when he'd babysit my two boys at the time, uh, they, they'd, he'd make them watch the Packer games yes. on TV, and every time the Packers scored, the they boys would have to house. run around the house. Yeah, Doug told us a few years ago. Yeah, so, you, so it's, abs- it's absolutely true, uh, <laughs> but uh, Saul also claims that he's, he beat Doug in one-on-one. Doug was five at the time, uh, but Saul probably did get him in a game of one-on-one. Well, it was good to see you. Your sport coat looks nice. Uh, nice. Have fun you know, with uh, your son this weekend and your family, and congratulations on a great season and that, continued success. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. More from Dallas after this on The Fan.